Hi everybody, this is Sven Latinovich. I am here today with a recent Pace graduate. His name is Sepp Demeglio, and he currently works for Microsoft. I'm going to let him introduce himself. He has a very impressive resume, and I don't want to butcher any of it, so Sepp, please take it away. Sure, yeah. Like Sven said, my name is Sepp Demeglio. Um, I'm a recent Pace grad, and I currently work at Microsoft as a customer engineer. Um, focused on user experience and accessibility. So what I do with that is Microsoft has a pretty big customer base and most of those customers have contracts that come with support. And my team is one of those teams that can help support customers. So if a customer has a question related to anything, they come to my team and they get some help with that. So if they have a question on um, artificial intelligence or cognitive services or DevOps um, or perhaps like how to use Office, they can ping my team and my team will send someone out to give some training, um, especially virtually now, or they'll give like a consultation or a how-to or something like that. And for customers that have specific questions related to user experience design or development, or accessibility, making sure that their applications are able to be used by a diverse set of audience, especially those with disabilities. That's where I come in and can help out with any of those questions. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. And how does um, your PACE background and what you studied at PACE, because you do have a bit more of an artistic background as well, and it's mm -hmm. really tied in with technology. So can you tell us a bit about how Right, your art sensibilities interfered with technology and how they work together, and what yeah, you said for sure is as well. Yeah, so at Pace, I got a Bachelor of Arts degree in computer science and um, digital design. When I first joined, I was actually a global marketing management major. I think international business was perhaps in there. Um, and I took a CIS 101 class and I had always thought that computer science would be too difficult for me or too hard or too much math. And after taking the CIS 101 class, I was actually super, super charged to thinking that like I could do it. Um, and I knew how in demand it was in the industry. And when I found out that I could do computer science with one of my other passions like art, I was really excited to get get shifted over to the Seidenberg School. Um, and I, through, through being a, like a, a Bachelor of Arts student, I was able to take a bunch of other electives that weren't necessarily um, like part of the strict computer science curriculum, perhaps, that I would have otherwise thought. So I got to take classes like sculpture and drawing and um, painting and mixed media a lot in the art school. And through that, I had a really awesome professor whose name was Daniel Hill. And he was actually a physics major in undergraduate and a, a fine arts major in his higher studies, so in his master's and um, forward. And a lot of what he talks about is kind of the intersectionality between art and science and art and technology. And he always brings up, and I love to talk about it whenever I have conversations or go on panels and things, that the last time in history when we were at this like huge pivotal moment of um, innovation and success was during the Renaissance. And that's when we used to value the artists on the same level as the scientists or the philosophers. Um, and kind of the importance of being able to have creativity um, and innovation on the same field as like hardcore like book science, I think is really important for, for the growth of any industry. Um, and so that's kind of my bread and butter where I like to stay. As a user experience consultant, um, a lot of my work is the intersection between technology and visual design or visual experiences. Uh, whenever I talk to customers, I always talk about how the most important thing when you're designing something, um, wh whether it's a new application, a, a new 
technology, a new experience, is that your users have access to it. Um, and so that ties in really nicely with accessibility and for people who have disabilities, but it also it kind of in a more broad sense makes you think about, well, you can have like something super impressive and super technical um, and super like all the bells and whistles that come with technology, but it won't be useful unless people can find access to it or find it usable. Um, and a big thing in usability is how something looks or how something feels or how like clear it is for them to navigate across. Um, and so in that sense, that's not really a technical problem to be solved, but it's more the like human side or the human element of it. Um, and so I think, I think that's kind of really been impactful for my, my journey into my professional world or kind of working across arts and technology. Um, and it's something that definitely has impacted my experience both at Pace and then moving forward. Oh, thank you, yeah. Thank you for sharing that story and the story with your physics professor and how it tied into your whole experience. It's a wonderful story, really. Yeah, he was actually my, um, my drawing professor and my sculpture professor. I had him twice. So it wasn't even with physics. He just talked about how he had a physics background, which I thought was super cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's brilliant. It's, yeah. yeah. And it's so true how he related it to the Renaissance. It is. Um, honestly, I could talk, try to talk to you about this for a while, but yeah, I yeah. do have. You should look uh, up his work. It's really cool. He actually, all of his artwork is based on like sound waves. So he really? creates art based on science, which is, again, that intersectionality. It is. Yeah, and it's so I, important. Oh, sorry, yeah. I, I don't want to interrupt you. I was going to say another like really awesome uh, experience that I had at Pace that was centered completely around the intersectionality and kind of interdisciplinary teams was when I got to go through the design factory program. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the design factory is a global network of schools um, that focuses on the design thinking methodology. And part of the, uh, when you go through the program, um, its main component is that you go onto this team of people with a bunch of different backgrounds. So interdisciplinary. And you develop a product for an external company over the course of a year. So a company will sponsor a team of about 10 or so students. Sometimes it's less, depending on the program. And they'll give some real money, whether it's like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, and they'll tell you to solve a problem over the course of a year. It can be something super generic and vague. Um, to something super specific. When I went, I, I was working with a Finnish energy company and they wanted, the team's problem they wanted us to solve was for people to think more about energy. So that was super vague. And over the course of the year, me and my team had to come up with a solution for them. And what we ended up creating was a, a smart meeting space that um, showed real time data of energy consumption in a room. And so, that if someone walked into a room and turned on the lights, there would be a visual representation on the screen that says like, this is how much energy you're using now. Um, if they had the window open and the heat was running, another spike, just kind of trying to get people more conscious and aware of their energy consumption. And that, that program isn't exclusive to Seidenberg at all. Um, Sven was telling me that he also went through the program and he wasn't in the computer science school. And that's kind of crucial to the mission of Design Factory and New York City Design Factory mainly, that uh, having different experiences and different majors and different backgrounds involved in the development process is how you lead to successful outcomes. And again, that makes sense for like the world that we live in, right? Because at companies, you don't only have people doing computer science, you have people from the business world, you have people from the art world, you have people from um, marketing, communications, et cetera. So yeah, it's, it's, I think it's really a valuable experience because it mirrors what happens when you leave university um, and like gives you really like valuable, tangible, real world experience or real work life experience. Um, so I found that probably as one of my like most valuable experiences while I was at Pace was going through the design factory program and then helping uh, 
launch the New York City Design Factory and kind of paying it forward to other students to come in the future. Yep, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, I really had the pleasure of being part of a team um, that worked on solving uh, water cleanliness issues. And it was a history major, a chemistry major, two CS majors, and me in psych and film. So it, it was such a rewarding experience, one of the best experiences I had at base. So yeah, I, sentiments. I think that's such a differentiator about going to PACE, just the ability to go through that program is phenomenal. Like I, I learned so much about everything in that, like you figure it out. It's kind of like a startup-y mentality in that like you have a small team, you have a, like a budget and you have to figure it out. You have a deadline and you have this problem statement and you just gotta hammer through until you come up with something because there's like real stake, there's real money on the line. Um, it, it's super, super valuable. It's, I think on any interview that I had, that's like always what people honed in on. Um, my roommate also, she was a fine arts major and any, any interview she has to this day for a new job or if she's switching teams or anything like that, that's the main thing that they always ask about. I was like, tell me about this project you did in Austria or tell me about this project you did in XYZ location. Um, because it's really interesting, it's kind of flashy on a resume, and you come up with such great experiences and great stories from it. Um, so uh, I definitely recommend it. It's really yeah. great. Yeah, thank you so much for giving our students all of this valuable advice. Um, especially, I think it's so rewarding coming from you because you are such a recent graduate, you graduated in 2017, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, it's something that they can start applying right now, all of this advice of how they can start getting involved and how they can start using tech and tech classes for their own personal passions and interests. So yeah, again, Seth, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your time. Yeah, students. For sure. Good luck. And we'll be back more with tech experts. Yeah. Have a good one, everyone. Bye.